Good evening. We bring you the latest in the world of sports. I'm Paolo Del Rosario. We bring you the conversations you want to hear from your favorite icons and athletes. I'm Carlo Pamintuan, and in tonight's Game Plan. Gabe Norwood helps us break down the toughest players to defend in the PBA Governor's Cup. Then we'll play our signature game called The President Declares with Gabe. Let's get his predictions for the NBA this year. Buckle up, sports fans. Let's get in the game. Well, the PBA Governor's Cup may have... Well, there you go. The PBA Governor's Cup may have pressed pause, but the discussion on who's the toughest and best won't stop tonight. It's time to find out the tough four, yes, the pun is intended. Tough four players to defend in the PBA Governor's Cup are from seven-time PBA All-Defensive Team and ten-time PBA All-Star Gabe Norwood. Gabe, welcome to the game. Hey, Gabe. Hi, Gabe. How you doing? Doing good, doing good. All right. So as uh, everyone watching at home may have now noticed, we're doing the show uh, from home because of the COVID situation around the country. And with that, Gabe, we want to know how you doing, how's your family doing, and can you tell us a bit about how your team's doing as well? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's been well documented. Uh, the PBA is on pause right now, but in terms of rain or shine, we're making the most of it. We're, we're back to our Zoom workouts um, until I think we have another round of testing to see who's available to get to to face to face workouts and things like that but we're just trying to stay focused um you know we we're right in the middle of the pack right now in terms of the standings but we we know we're you know we're that close to really pushing it over the top so we're trying to stay locked in stay in shape and, and mentally ready but as far as the family we're good um you know just enjoying more family time once again we were able to to get out of town for the holidays but it's it's back to school for the kids and and back to our our daily routine here in 2022. All right, let's start things off with the first name on your list right now, Gabe, um, of top players, toughest to defend. You picked Mikey Williams. What makes Mikey Williams, the Philippine Cup Finals MVP, so difficult to defend? Uh, I really think it's, for me personally, you know, I, I've been around for a while and he's a new face. You know, he, he's a guy that I haven't had to defend that much. I, I haven't really figured him out yet in terms of, you know, what is what makes him uncomfortable, what he likes to do and things like that. So I think it's more of the the mystery for me uh, with Mikey. Uh, I think he's obviously an elite scorer. He's a pro. He's played at, at such a high level uh, even before stepping foot in the PBA. So he, he he's fun to watch. He's fun to really step up your game um, in terms of your defensive mindset to really challenge, uh, you know, me as a player, me as a defender to, to really bring out the best of me. So So Mikey's definitely on that list. You know, from one of the newest faces, let's go to the scariest mustache in the league, uh, Robert Bollick. You named him as one of those players as well. Uh, with with Bert, you know, with with Berto, it's it's mindset with him, man. He he's he's never off. You know what I mean? He, he's one of those guys. He's he has supreme confidence. He he's always ready for the moment, and I think that's one of the things that you know really sets him apart. There's a lot of elite scorers in the league, but. Just in terms of the mindset, you know, he could go 0 for 10 and he could come out and ne hit the next three shots to win the game. Uh, and he's completely confident in that. So, Robert, the, the thing that sets him apart is definitely his mindset and his mentality. And you always have to be on as a defender. You can't take a play at all. Gabe, you've been teammates with your next pick, uh, Terrence Romeo. We all know he is, his handles, his ability to make tough shots. But is he much harder to guard now with all those SMB weapons around him? Yeah, I, I mean, Terrence is always a threat, right? He, he's always, he, he's a certified bucket. I think it, it's been it's been well documented in the league. So with Terrence, I think it's one of those things, you know, you have June Mar down there, you have C-Ross kind of dictating everything and, and you know, CJ now over there and things like that, Simon and things, Mo, you know, the roster is truly complete. So, you know, Terrence right now is playing a lot of 
you know, isolation type of situations back to what he was doing, you know, in his earlier in his career, just with kind of more, you know, efficient talent around him to get wins. So, you know, it's, it's free reign for him when he gets going. And if he's not going, he's, he's still a threat there on the court. Cause you know, we can, he, what he can do. You know, your final pick, we interviewed him a couple of weeks back and I asked him, you know, you said that you're a past first point guard, but we all know you for your scoring. Matthew Wright is the last guy on your list. Yeah, I think Matt, especially this this current uh, season, he, he's really been a well-rounded player. You know, I think his early years, he was really thought of just as a scorer. But you're looking right now, I think it's his career high in assists and, he, and he's really facilitating. So now you're, you're not just playing Matt's shot anymore. And I, I think... You know, similar to the guys that I said before, he's always a threat. He's always he can always put the ball in the basket. But now he's doing such a good job of getting his teammates involved that you know he might have an off shooting night, but he might turn around and have nine assists and no turnovers. So you know, I think Matt has really evolved in terms of his complete game, which makes him a, a threat on the court. One bonus question, Gabe: Among your teammates, Reynam Batak or JV Mokon, who is tougher to defend? Ooh, man. <laughs> Man, man, I might have to go with Ray because I feel like he's just gonna draw a foul on me. Like, I, like <laughs> Dre, I, I, I mean, I think Ray leads the league in, in free throw attempts. So you know, no matter how good a defense I might play, I think I might get called for a foul uh, towards the end of the shot clock. Ray, Ray has mastered that. All right, uh, we will have more with Gabe Norwood when we come back. But after the break, we will play our signature game called The President Declares with the one and only Gabe Norwood. Let's get his predictions for the NBA Finals this year. Stay tuned. You're watching the game. Got you with that one, Gabe. That was well played. Well played. I, I would like have that. said my my answer would have been JV Mokon for the first forty five minutes, and then Nambata for the final three. So, guys, apparently we're still live on Facebook. So, (laughs) just want to say hi to everyone watching on Facebook and to all the friends out there who let me know right now that, hey, your audio is on. (laughs) So, it's a good thing we didn't say anything bad. (laughs) That's funny. So, it's just the audio? Yeah, the audio is heard right now. Shout outs. Shout outs to all the viewers on Facebook. Please send the stars. (laughs) <laughs> if you want to get into nfts talk to gabe yeah. he's that, he's that guy the, all right we're going on standby we're going back on tv now we're going back on tv all right carlo you're up oh that's funny Welcome back to the game. As we are graced with the presence of the President Gabe Norwood tonight on our show, we are bringing back his signature segment on the game called The President Declares. We shall be giving some fill-in-the-blank questions and Gabe will answer accordingly. Gabe, you ready? Hmm. I think so. You know, I I like to go with politically correct answers, but this fill in the blanks. There's not many options. (laughs) Let's say this will be the state of the association address of Gabe Norwood. Let's start things off with uh, we are nearing the NBA All-Star festivities. So the president declares that blank and blank will be the NBA All-Star captains. I'm putting in Steph. Mm Mm-hmm. And KD, I'm going Steph and KD, uh, respective teams doing doing great things. You know, Brooklyn's had their their drama and things like that this season, but you know, KD when he's out there on the court, he, he's he's been super efficient, getting his his team what they need. And Steph, man, he's having another amazing year. It's, it seems like it's just snowballing from year to year now. 
Man, you know, it's gonna be so weird if that comes true that LeBron is not a captain <laughs> in an All Star game. I mean, like, I don't remember the last time that has that's happened, but you know, that that's how it is. I actually think that you might be right there, Gabe. But now we'll move on to something a bit more controversial. The president declares that blank will win the 2021-2022 MVP award. I'm going to go with Steph Curry. I'm, I'm going to go with Steph. I, I think, you know, it's it's time. It's his time again. Uh, my sleeper pick, though, if if Memphis can sneak into, like, that top three. Oh. I mean, if Memphis is really? top three. Top three in the West, I, I, I got I got job. That, that means job. Yeah, wow. That's my sleeper yeah, pick. Not even KD? I, I mean, KD's not – he's not going to surprise anybody if he wins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. AD, Giannis, I, I think if they, you know what I mean, if they have the consistent year that they've been having so far, it wouldn't be a surprise. But my my surprise pick would be would be Ja if they can make that happen. Sure, sure. I I, I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. Next yeah, one. For it. The president declares that this team, blank, will finish as the number one seed out in the East. I'm going to stick with Chicago. I, I think in terms of regular season and, and what they have – I think they had a lot of their COVID stuff that's already passed them. So I feel like, you know, in terms of I'm no scientist, but I'm just mm-hmm. assuming that they should be, you know, healthy and safe throughout the course of the the course of the regular season. You know, DeMar, Zach Levine, Vucevic, who hasn't been completely consistent, but still is always a threat out there. Their bench is stepping up. I, I think Chicago uh, in terms of the East. Yeah, I think Chicago is a safe bet. Uh, of course, uh, Nets fans would uh, take offense to that, and I'm sure other fan bases will say otherwise too. But then now, let's move out west. The president declares that Blank will finish as the number one seed in the East, in the West, rather. In the West, man, That's tough. This is another tough one. This is another tough one because who's number one in the West right now? The Warriors. Oh, is it the Suns Phoenix. or the Warriors? I'm Phoenix. Check that. Is it Phoenix? Because I feel like, I mean, you got Clay coming back. The Warriors, I think so the, the Warriors. Suns, the Suns are number one with 30 and eight, and the Warriors number two at 29 and nine. Yeah, I mean, the defending West champs aren't getting a lot of respect, but the Warriors, man, I, I feel like they could definitely make it happen. Clay, get them back healthy, Wiseman, it, it should be interesting. Yeah, you think the Warriors are going to get, yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Carlo, you might yeah, feel like you want to say something. Yeah, I will not game. disagree with Gabe Norwood. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> yeah, you... but it's it's crazy. Uh, I, just to bring out the old quote of, of, of Coach Yang before when he said, you're only as good as your last RT-PCR test. And it feels <laughs> that that's going to be uh, the situation here, especially with all the standings here. Only two it's games true. separate uh, first and third. So, yeah, it's going to be strange there. Whichever team gets the best 10-day players will probably be the number one team. It, it could g- come down to that. Yeah, it definitely good. Phoenix is, their 10 days look good right now, so it, it could definitely go either way. So, Gabe, you said that it will be Golden State as a number one seed in the West and Chicago for the number one seed out East. But now the president declares that blank and blank will meet in the NBA Finals. Man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick with the Warriors. I think. I think they they're they're ready to kind of reclaim their their throne there in, in the West. But I mean, on paper, you can't go against. I don't see how you go against the Nets. A healthy Nets team, um, even with Kyrie playing every other game, that puts pressure on playoff series. You know, you can't play in, in the games at home. But you know, I, I think Brooklyn healthy. Hopefully, I think that's what everybody wants to see, a healthy Brooklyn team in the finals. But, um, yeah, between the Warriors, it, it could be fun to watch. You know, ironically, that would mean that you would have the healthiest Kyrie has ever been because he's played so little games. But, you know, rest versus rust will always be the argument. But okay, And then, so- and then Pau, he injects a Johnson & Johnson a day before the start of the NBA Finals. And, and he can do everything. <laughs> and that's wrong. Oh my goodness! Like, and he can yeah, just have wow. that booster later on too. That's gonna be crazy. But uh, yeah, uh, we're, what's the next one, Carlo? You got this. One. Uh, the president will declare that Blank will be the 2021-2022 NBA Finals MVP. So, given my matchup, I'm, I'm gonna go with KD, man. I'm gonna go with Slim Reaper. I think you know, put him in that situation. He always shows up. I think he's going to have a, a great finals given they make it that far. A great playoff run altogether. It could be something epic. So I think KD's locked in. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't think 
anyone's going to argue with that particular call. Uh, you know, there will always be those Steph stands out there who'd be cursing you out right now. But, you know, regardless, <laughs> I, I, I actually want to poke fun at another fan base here. That This is because of our head writer, who's a hardcore Lakers fan. Gabe, how far will the Lakers go this year? Ooh. Is AD back? I mean, that's a question, ooh, right? Uh, yeah. Question mark, right? You know, LeBron is playing out of his mind. I, mm-hmm. I didn't even get him right there in that MVP talk. Um, you know, if if AD doesn't come back, you know, healthy, it's going to be tough. You know, maybe first round, you know, given depending on their matchup, uh, really depending on the matchup. But are it, they it's playing tough. team? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think they'll figure something out. I, I think they'll get to a series right away, but I, I don't think they'll be in the play. Gabe, how about my Mavs? I just, <laughs> I, I just, I just had to sneak it in. Man, I, I just hope, I just hope they get it together too. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. It, it's, it's, it's the talent, the talent level. Maybe not one to fifteen or sixteen isn't the the same as the rest of the the Western Conference, but. They have star power, man. Luca, Luca makes plays. He shows up in the playoffs. So, you know, hopefully, it's one of those situations, kind of similar to last year, right? It seems like they picked yeah. up steam as it went. Yeah, and they got to get in. They got to get in first. You know, I, I, I want, I wanted to have like this one last bonus question, but we won't have time for it. I'm gonna let you sleep on this though, because there's a real possibility that we're not gonna have either Damon Lillard or Luka Doncic in the All Star game because of how their seasons have gone so far. Who makes it over the other? Because I have a feeling that's something to think about. But that could be your next article on NBA games game. (laughs) So I I just did the pitch for you. Uh, Look, thank you very much for joining us here, uh, Gabe. It's it's fantastic that you're here. And please do stay safe. Yes, yes. Good seeing you guys. Stay safe also. and, And definitely, you know, happy 2022 to you guys. Thank you, Gabe. And then after the break, we will find out What's next for Smart and 7-Eleven Philippines after their successful virtual run in 2021? Stay tuned. You're watching the game. All right. So we're still on Facebook. I think Gabe, are you still here? (laughs) Gabe, are you still here? Welcome back to the game. The 7-Eleven Run Series continues to be a staple in the Philippine sports community in partnership with SMART and PLDT. Our very own Paolo Del Rosario sat down with the minds behind the successful staging of the 7-Eleven Virtual Run 2021.
here joining me today is June Ang, the General Merchandise Division Head of 7-Eleven, Ms. Presley Kapigbak, the first VP and Head of National Key Accounts for Smart, and Ms. Pilut Montes, the Head of Key Accounts for Marketing in Smart as well. So June, I'm going to start off with you. I mentioned it a while ago, bigger than last year. In fact, 37,000 yung sumama sa run ninyo last time around at the end of the year. Can you tell us a bit about what happened in the entire for the entire event? We did try our first virtual run last year. We have close to 20,000 runners. And the beneficiary during that time are all the LGUs being, uh, being voted out by the runners. And for this year, we were able to offer a better way of delivering it because we have that experience of last year's. When we have gained more than 37 registration who participated for this year's run giving the runner the freedom of choice where they want to do it, how they want to do it on their safety comfort zone. What we did is we give back to the to the to all the proceeds to our frontliner for this time, especially like the, the rise of the COVID-19 and everything. So just in time, we are honoring all our frontliner and giving them back and what is due then. Ms. Pressy, I want to talk to you next because... You know, they talked about the partnerships that had to make it happen. Can you tell us a bit about your history you know, with 7-Eleven and what really made it uh, a match made in, in heaven, really, just to make sure everything happens right? Smart actually has been supporting 7-Eleven's fun run since 2018. So it's been four years now and obviously you know, looking forward on the fifth year since both companies believe in building a healthy nation. So in the past two years, though, we've been doing this event online, uh, again, obviously due to the pandemic, no? and through Smart's fastest LTE and 5G networks, we were able to serve the needs of the virtual runners when they participated in this meaningful event. But outside of the fun run, Smart and 7-Eleven have been working together for decades now. Mm -hmm. And that's providing our customers with promos and campaigns that would make their lives simpler and more convenient. Ms. Pilot, I want to talk to you next, uh, especially with everything happening. It's, uh, everyone's stuck at home. Everyone's having a hard time staying healthy. How important is Yung messaging, yung alignment ng dalawang brands na to, to make sure that everyone's healthy and fit, especially throughout this trying time. So, um, like what Ms. Presi mentioned, no, we've been supporting 7-Eleven for the past years in this 7-Eleven uh, fun run. And uh, it only goes to show the kind of commitment that 7-Eleven and Smart has, the two companies, the two brands, in actually um, supporting our nation in having um, healthy citizens. So we're a firm believer, believer that... Um, we would like to produce um, healthy citizens because the wealth of the nation is actually having healthy, uh, having a healthy nation. No? So as a major sponsor, SMART is um, promoting this fun run in all our major platforms and reaching the total subscriber base of all our major brands, um, including SMART, TNT, SMART Bro, SMART Postpaid, and Prepaid. So we're reaching out to all the subscriber base of um, our company of SMART and even PLDT to promote this. No? And we are very committed not only in promoting the physical wellness of um, every Filipino, but even the mental wellness as well. Um, SMART has always been in the forefront in creating a lot of programs in promoting proper nutrition and even um, mental wellness. A lot of people joined. They felt safe. Can you? How, how important was that for 7-Eleven to make sure that it was safe? And what did 7-Eleven do to make sure that safe talaga yung buong, yung buong experience for everyone? Yeah. For... For 2021, it's a virtual run. So what we did is we continuously uh, remind our runners through SMART, uh, cascading this uh, through the social media, and continuously intensify the said information and reminding them to do social distancing, wear masks, and do all of these things to make sure that they are on a safety mode. Even though they're, they're, they're running, they're, they're doing their exercise, uh, whatever race or category that they have uh, registered. So 
for 2022. Okay, so we're planning right now for a face-to-face -face physical run for Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, hoping to do this one gunshot together with smart team, okay, so that everybody would be able to enjoy and participate. And we could send delegate again to represent the country to participate, hopefully, in Vietnam. Can we expect SMART to be there the entire way as well? Can we? What can we expect more from this partnership with 7-Eleven? Yeah, so definitely we're all here no, to support 7-Eleven's uh, uh, fun run for uh, this year, 2022. So um, now more than ever, we need to take care of our this in our health, no, and not just our physical health, but of course mental health, and this would really be of help, no, to our um, customers as well. So we hope that you can join us in the next 7-Eleven Fun Run, and this is going to be powered by PLDT and Smart. Gano ka exciting yung fact that patuloy pa rin yung partnership na yan that uh, hopefully we're getting healthier together and sana face to face nga tayo come 2022. Yes, uh, we're very excited, Paolo. Uh, in fact, cliche as it may sound that health is wealth, truly uh, we are advocates that, you know, health is wealth. And so we encourage everyone to participate in the 7-Eleven fun run. And let's be healthy, not only physically, but mentally as well. And, um, you know, let's uh, try to support each other. Again. Thank you very much for coming on. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Jun Ang, the General Merchandise Division Head of 7-Eleven, Ms. Presi Katigbak, the first VP and Head of National Key Accounts for Smart, and Ms. Pilut Montes, the Head of Key Accounts for Marketing in Smart as well. Thank you, and we can't wait to see you face-to-face -face in the next 7-Eleven fun run. Thank Salamat you. Po. Thank you. Meanwhile, the MPP group of companies together with its partners are in unity in spreading joy and hope this holiday season. And you can be a part of this remarkable movement. This time, holiday shift, to holiday shift all the way frontliners received a holiday surprise. Let's watch this. Ang trabaho namin dito sa traffic operations, uh, dahil meron naman po tayo talagang mga, mga motorista araw-araw, is at 24 by 7. Maging Pasko, New Year, dito po tayo na uh, nag-aalalay sa ating mga motorista. Itong uh, programa ng uh, tuloy pa rin ang Pasko, namigay nga tayo ng mga pagkain dito sa ating mga nagsishifting ng mga personnel. Talaga makakatulong to, ma uh, nakakapagbigay uh, sa, na rin sa ating mga nagsishifter na mga toll uh, tellers, yung ating mga patrol, at saka itong mga tao natin dito sa traffic control room. Tuloy pa rin ang Pasko ng Pinoy kahit ano pa mang pasakit sa ating bumalaki, pag-ibig sa ating puso ay mamamalagi, na para bang ngiti dito sa ating... The simple act of kindness by way of giving me to our frontliners is very important because this simply is showing them that we care for them, that we value them, that we value their time and their service. Maraming maraming salamat at uh, tayo'y nakapagbigay ng konting uh, ligaya na ibsan ang kanilang uh, pagod at uh, yun, malaking tulong po para sa kanila. Let's do our part and spread the Christmas cheer to our fellow Kababayans. You may send your donations to the accounts flashed on your screen or contact us on the following details. Tara na sa isang maligayang bayanihan, Filipino. And of course, uh, Carlo will say goodbye first. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, everyone. I'm Carlo Pamintua. That's right. Uh, as we, as you all know, we're doing this from home. And you want to remind everyone to please mask up. Please get vaccinated if you do can. Stay safe and try to keep the virus away. And hopefully things will turn out for the better sooner rather than later. Catch us weeknights here on One News, One Sports, and One Sports Plus. I'm Paolo Del Rosario, and this has been The Game.